I would now like to ask Mr. James Robinson, on behalf of Mana Fenua Nai Tahuriri, to come forward and open our ceremony. If I Yatatawaraki <laughs> E ko koe e te maunga he tai toko mai, ai ne ake nei, ai. E te Prime Minister, Mr John Keyes, the Member of our uh, Parliament, Mr Jerry Brownlee, the Mayor, Mr Parker, Mayor S, Joe, distinguished guests. Now, my heart and my kit to put a put a work it here at the fence force in our rope. No, my, no, my heart and my. It's in our rock where it's a kai faka hide it. It's our mark. Then I tell me, he kiak where it's a rangatira. In our rope, kai mahi rope on our civil defense. Kumutuna mahi kato. Kai roto. Ita fenua o te tahi. Kana ita mihi aroha kia kia koto ito mahi. E piki te ora, e piki te kaha, e piki te marma tanga kia koto na aropu. Kama ito wehe ito mahi ke roto ita fenua o ato tahi. Kama ito wehe kia kaha kia mai kia marma nui. E te nei wā me te noe ano hoki Ke ho mai te marmatanga Me te rangi marie E ko motu e tō mahi kei roto nei E te puropuro waki tia E nga rōpū o nga civil defence Kano i te mehi aroha ki a koutou Piki te ora, piki te kaha Piki te marmatanga ki a koutou E nga rōpū E nga kōrins Ki o te tahi a Christchurch E hoki atu E hari atu Ki ngā reki o ngā mano E hari atu E te mamai Kei roto nei E hoki atu ki te kainga tuturu O ngā ihua o ngā mano Me hari atu E ngā wairua E te rōpū Kei roto nei E te whenua O te tahi E tukuna atu ki ngā reki o ngā mano E tō mamai kei roto nei E tō rōpū E hari atu E hari atu E hari atu rā Kia kaha, kia maia, kia marama nui E te nei wā E tō rōpū O ngā civil defence Kanu i te mehi aroha kia Kia koutou E ngā whāna ki au te tahi no mahara mai ki te purupuru waki tia The civil defence Kanu i te mehi aroha ki a koutou And no mahara mai I te purupuru waki tia I te civil defence And no mahi kei roto nei Ki o te tahi No reira Tēnā koutou Tēnā koutou A ki ora tātou katoa I would now like to ask the Prime Minister, the Right Honourable John Key, to address the parade on behalf of the Government 
and the people of New Zealand. Kia ora tato. Can I take this opportunity to acknowledge uh, all of the members of Parliament that are here today? Uh, obviously, Mayor uh, Bob Parker, uh, Sir Mark Solomon, Lieutenant General Rhys Jones, the Defence Force personnel, the SERA officials, and all Cantabrians. So today is a momentous day in the recovery of Christchurch, a day that will be marked in the history books as we say farewell to the Defence Force personnel who have provided such tremendous service for this city over the last two and a half years. Today we remember the major earthquakes that struck Christchurch in September of 2010 and February of 2011. I'm sure everyone gathered here today has their own memories of the earthquakes, their family members who for the most part will have all been affected because of the enormous damage uh, that the earthquake uh, had on the, the people of Christchurch and the surrounding areas. And so today we once again say thank you to those that played their part in helping uh, at the worst of times for the people of Christchurch. Earlier this week I was in Christchurch once again uh, with Minister Brownlee and with the Christchurch City Council as we set about the work uh, to see Christchurch put back on its feet once more. I had the opportunity to visit the members uh, working at the EQC and I took a moment to thank them for the tremendous work that they are doing. I know that there is uh, always and has been frustration uh, with the speed of progress in Christchurch and the government acknowledges the challenges uh, that we all face. But we should also take a moment to acknowledge the enormity of the destruction that took place in Christchurch. This is a $40 billion rebuild, one that has seen over 750,000 individual uh, claims being lodged and nearly 200,000 households uh, being affected. So we are all working to see uh, the speed of recovery uh, lifted. But today we mark the 31st and final CBD cordon reduction, which is a huge milestone in the city's recovery. The cordon has become a symbol of the events that took place here. From today, as the city centre reopens, people will come back, buildings will rise, and the future of Christchurch will be clearer. A major presence in Christchurch for nearly three years now has been the personnel from the Defence Force of New Zealand. Today marks the end of the official involvement of the earthquake recovery. Those of you here today represent the thousands of personnel from the three services who have been here throughout the last almost three years, helping guarding and serving the greater people of Christchurch, often under very difficult conditions. You have been a reassuring presence for the people of Christchurch as they have come to terms with this natural disaster and set about re rebuilding their lives and their communities. Many will say that this is your job, but I know that the reassurance and professionalism that you have displayed is appreciated by the nation and by the people of Canterbury. And so today, on behalf of everyone, can I take the opportunity to thank you for your great work, for the courage that you showed, the support you gave to people, and the belief that we could all hold in the future of this very vibrant city. The last two and a half years have been a very difficult time uh, for Cantabrians. There's been an enormous amount to contend with. There's been the enormous tragedy of the loss of 185 people. There's been the physical destruction to homes and to communities. 
There's been the disruption for sports and, and cultural events. There's been the challenge of seeing the future for Christchurch and what might unfold. But what has constantly been on display here in Canterbury has been the resilience of the people, the belief in this city, and the knowledge that this city will rise once again to have a great future. This is a city that has been, in my view, incredibly well served by not just the culture and the fabric that underpins this society, but by the people of the Defence Force, by the officialdom right across the city, the men and women of our police force and St John's Ambulance and so many other services that have come together to give hope, to give support and to give encouragement. Today you, the members of the NZDF, uh, leave your official duties as we reopen the CBD. You go with our thanks and our gratitude for a job well done and for appreciation of the contribution that you have made. Christchurch will once again become an incredibly livable city. In my view, the most livable city in New Zealand. There's much more for us to do, but there truly is light at the end of the tunnel. Thank you and good luck. I would now like to ask His Worship the Mayor of Christchurch, Mr. Bob Parker, to come forward and address the parade on behalf of the citizens of Christchurch. Tihei Māori Ora. And it is the spirit of these wonderful young men and women from our Defence Forces that I really want to acknowledge today. You know, we couldn't have got through the last terrible almost three years now without the things that you have done. And I can well remember on the, uh, I think it was the 4th of September, the events kind of blur into one, but I'm pretty sure that was the day that just over here at the Art Gallery, uh, we were running the EOC and a couple of friends from the uh, territorials, from our defence forces, came in and said, what can we do to help? And uh, we said, well, you know, we're going to need a lot of manpower around the city. We need people who can, uh, with discipline and uh, also with the right emotional concern and touch, help us in the coming hours. We checked in with the head office uh, of civil defence and the reply that we got was, no, you shouldn't be using defence forces in this work. I'm not quite sure why, maybe they thought it would send the wrong signal, you know, with a light armoured vehicle rolling down Colombo Street or whatever it was, I'm not sure, but they said you, sh you shouldn't do that. And I have to say it was great good fortune uh, that the Right Honourable John Key had phoned and said, look, I'm coming down to see what the heck's going on. I'll be down there this afternoon. And we met the Prime Minister as he stepped out of his vehicle and uh, said, look, everything is, is uh, you know, pretty rough, but it's under control. That was the 4th of September event. Uh, but I'm wondering if you would mind if we called in some of the territorials and other defence force to help us. And the PM said, no, of course, it's a great idea. You should definitely do that. So I turned to the head of our local civil defence and I said, well, there you are. You can override Wellington now. You've got the PM giving you support. And it was a great thing and it was the right thing to do. And again, on the 22nd of February, we could not have got through that day without your help. There was the Navy in Littleton Harbour. Littleton was cut off. They immediately set up emergency medical centres. They set up stations to help and to feed. And they got directly involved in that recovery operation. Here in the city, once again, our young men and women from the Defence Forces were deployed around the cordons. And that released the police to go into a, lum a number of other areas where their specific skill set was more needed at that moment. And then the Air Force stepped in, shifting, I don't know how many people you shifted, but it was an unbelievable operation, bringing in supplies, flying out tourists, getting them out of the city, out of the tents that we'd put up for them to sleep in. And you did all of that. And we often thought as citizens, as we uh, looked at you standing uh, on the cordons on a freezing winter's night here in Christchurch, 
what a tough job that is. And then you'd see a local turn up with a bowl of soup uh, or some food. It's been an extraordinary relationship, probably the greatest single deployment of New Zealand Defence Forces in our country for a long period of time. And we're sad to see you go. We are so proud of you. And your parents and family members, they'll be here today too, and uh, they should know exactly how this city feels about the job that you did. You are great New Zealanders, and all of those who have worn the uniforms that you now wear before you, all of them would look at you and say, those young men and women, they stand for everything that we ever stood for. And we're very, very proud of you. So thank you for what you've done. I'm going to ask uh, the people of my city to give you three cheers, even though half of them are probably your mums and dads, so that shouldn't be a problem. But for all of you, hip hip. Hooray! Hip hip! Hooray! Hip hip! Hooray! And now we've got a special uh, presentation to make. Or is that a little bit later? A little bit later. That's Not a little quite. bit later. All right, so we're going to make a special presentation a little bit later. <laughs> Thank you all again from the bottom of our hearts. You're great Kiwis. Thank you. Very shortly. I would now like to ask the Honourable Jerry Brownlee, Minister of Earthquake Recovery and Member of Parliament for Ilam to come forward and address the contingent on behalf of the Canterbury Earthquake Recovery Authority. At the conclusion of his remarks, the Chief of Defence Force, Lieutenant General Rhys Jones, will join the Minister on the dais to respond to the presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mark. Can I just say to uh, all of you young men and women who have stood on that cordon, I agree totally with all of the comments that have been made by the Prime Minister and by the Mayor. It's been very comforting to know that when we had such a dangerous part of the city, we had people there making sure that others were kept safe. And to those of you who uh, occasionally had to stop me going in there because I didn't have my proper identification, please be assured I forgive you. You've done a wonderful job. It's been fantastic to have the security of, of knowing that you were there. And uh, I know that as people have seen you in your uniforms, it's made them feel very, very proud to live in a country like this, knowing that our military are there to stand alongside us and to keep us all safe at a time like this. So uh, on behalf of Sarah, our deep thanks to you for everything that you've done and the confidence you've given us. And um, the presentation, I believe, very shortly after, uh, Lieutenant General Rhys Jones. Thank you. Right. General, salute. Salute. Officers, stay. Right. Yeah, Stand there. Eight. After this. Kia koutou, kua Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. We were here at the start and we're here at the very end. That's a statement I've often made when I've come down here and visited those people who have been affected by the Christchurch earthquakes, in particular those people who work in Sierra and the Mayor of Christchurch. It's certainly been our pleasure and one of those amazing things in the New Zealand Defence Force history that this has been the largest internal to New Zealand military deployment ever. Most people think of the Defence Force as only doing things overseas and therefore it's isolated from their own daily lives in New Zealand. This earthquake and our support to the Christchurch community has shown that this is New Zealand's Defence Force and is here for New Zealand when New Zealand needs it. The weight of that burden and the proof of that is on the shoulders of these men and women who stand in front of you here today. And these are men and women that I, as the Chief of Defence Force, am immensely proud of. The day after the September earthquake in 2010, I came down as Chief of Army to visit Burnham Camp and my soldiers who were out on the, assisting the city. I visited the Burnham kitchen and I talked to one female civilian member who, whose own home had been damaged during that time. She said, I'd rather be here doing something useful than being at home crying over the damage to my house. In a similar way, we had soldiers, sailors and airmen out here in Christchurch 
performing their duty when their own homes were destroyed, very similar to police and fire and other community support people here in Christchurch. But it's that dedication, that resilience that uh, our people showed that really demonstrates the resilience of Christchurch itself and why it's been a great pleasure for us as a Defence Force to be engaged in helping the city hand in hand right from the start. At the peak, 1,800 members of the New Zealand Defence Force were here in Christchurch. But that was really only the tip of the iceberg because everyone in the Defence Force has contributed to their support for Christchurch. Be that loading aircraft or ships in some other city, doing maintenance on the equipment that was coming down, doing the administration for the travel down here, taking care of people who were evacuated out of Christchurch and wherever they were relocated, or even just doing the administration, in many cases, just doing the extra jobs back in their hometown so that troops, airmen and sailors could be released to come down here for Christchurch. And therefore it's not just those people who have attended their work down here in Christchurch that I want to thank today, it's those people right throughout the Defence Force who have contributed to these occasions. There is another group of people that I think we need to be thanking. As a Defence Force we have strong links with our allies and our partners and so it's great to see here today the representatives of the, those other militaries here today and can I thank those countries that also contributed their militaries and particularly the Singaporeans who were here on the day of the earthquake, the Australians, the British, the Canadians and the Americans who reacted so quickly and came to our support. But it was quite fortuitous that New Zealand Defence Force was down here on that particular day. We had one of our larger exercises going on around Christchurch. It was an exercise that was designed to build on the lessons from the uh, September earthquake which we had built into this February exercise. And the Singaporean company had uh, joined us for it. Part of that was a simulation about post-earthquake, how do we go and do civil relief. I think the Singaporeans thought we had amazing simulation systems here uh, in that February and it took quite a few hours to convince them that no, this was not an exercise, this is actually for real. But I was also here in Christchurch on that day attending a conference and, and was uh, in the city to feel the quakes. I went out to Burnham to, uh, to find out what had uh, gone on and where our forces were on that particular exercise. And then I made the decision to cancel the exercise and bring our forces in here. Many had already done that. For example, the Canterbury and a company group were uh, unloading from Littleton. And as we've heard the Mayor say, they went immediately into action. We had people still in Burnham Camp who were mobilised and were pushed in. But I needed to take that decision to cancel the exercise and focus on the city. And since this exercise had taken almost eight months to create, there was a lot of reluctance for my people to say, well, should we? And I remember a question that was asked to me on the day that I'll always remember, which said, do you really want to cancel this exercise? And which I pointed to the uh, TV screens which showed the destroyed cathedral. And I said, mm, I think maybe I do. And that then set the tone for within hours, within minutes, in fact, our soldiers, sailors and airmen were in the city. I do recall one event where it was late at night where a, a soldier was on uh, the duty late at night uh, and speaking to him his own house had been uh, damaged, he was a student um, and his house had been damaged. Uh, a lot of his stuff had been destroyed. He had borrowed a uniform to uh, volunteer for the task, he'd come out here and he didn't uh, focus on his own problems, he didn't focus on what he'd lost or the uh, missed opportunities. He was focusing on the effort and really praising the people of Christchurch for what they had done. Because that night he had been given hot cups of soup. He had been given a, a hot meal, a full three course meal, as well as cups of tea during the day. And despite his own personal loss, he was at great, in great awe and in great thanks to the people of Christchurch. And this is where I wish to end my speech, by thanking you as a city for what you've done to allow us to do our job. It has been a great bonding factor, I think, between the military and the community of Christchurch in particular, but New Zealand. And I go back to one of my opening statements. The New Zealand Defence Force isn't just a defence force for fighting overseas. It is a defence force that's here for whenever New Zealand needs it. And now I'd like to invite the Mayor to come forward and make a parchment presentation of gratitude to Lieutenant General Jones.
Thank you. Thank you, uh, Lieutenant General, for those generous words of thanks to our citizens as well. Uh, we appreciate that. This has been a relationship. It's been a partnership. And uh, on behalf of the people of our city, we would like to present you with something that will, we hope, uh, be hung in exactly the most appropriate place, framed and proudly displayed. It's from the city of Christchurch, and if I may, I'll just read it. In recognition to all whom these presents come, greetings. The mayor, councillors, and citizens of Christchurch wish to formally record hereby their profound gratitude to the officers, sailors, soldiers, airmen, and women and civilian staff of the New Zealand Defence Force for service to the city. Since the fourth day of September 2010, in the wake of the Canterbury earthquakes. Thank you, sir. And thank you all for what you've done. Thank you. Lieutenant General Jones will now ask permission from the government to dismiss the cordon guard and order Lieutenant Colonel McMillan to complete the order. I would like to invite the Prime Minister to return to the dais to join Lieutenant General Jones to receive a final salute from Lieutenant Colonel McMillan and the New Zealand Defence Force contingent. Prime Minister, I formally ask permission to dismiss the last of the cordon guard. Permission granted. Lieutenant Colonel McMillan, please dismiss the cordon. Cordon Commander, dismiss the cordon. The parade will now march off, ladies and gentlemen, so keep cheering and, and we'll do whatever you want to do.